Everyone. Well, what is truth then? Who is truth? Who's listening to you? With this, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. But it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? He's hoping he's in a situation right here. This is the most powerful man in this area right now. Works for the Roman government. He is slowly, progressively here losing control of the situation. Because he's got a man in front of him who he is seeing nothing wrong with. Put yourself in his shoes. You have the power to kill someone. You also have the power to save someone's life. And you are being put to a choice where you have to look at this person, have a conversation with this person, and determine whether they should live or whether they should die. Keep in mind, we have finite minds. This is a big ordeal for us. This is huge. You hold power when you hold someone's life in your hands. But he's losing control of this because he walks out And he says, do you want me to release the king of the Jews? He's kind of like, oh, please let me release this guy because I don't want to put him to death because he's a nice guy. They shout back, nope, not him. Give us Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in a rebellion. Barabbas was a wicked guy that had rebelled against the Roman government. And he had led a rebellion and thousands of people had died. Lots of blood was shed. He was a horrible Horrible guy, and the Jews wanted Jesus dead so bad that they're pressuring this man with power, Pontius Pilate, into doing what they want even though he doesn't want to do it. This is where he's starting to lose control. It says, then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. Anybody here ever been flogged? Flogging is leather whips that spread out, and it literally rips the flesh off right down to the bone. Now, there was laws about flogging, okay? You could only flog 29 times at 30 times you were breaking the law. Um, So you heard Paul say that he's been uh, uh, flogged uh, 30 minus 1 times, 29 times. They flogged Jesus 29 times. And if you had a really good flogger, if you had a, a Roman soldier that was really good at it, he would whip you with it and it would wrap right around you and it would rip the flesh right from stomach to back. Okay, it's bad. Okay, so, so Pilate is trying to find sort of a happy medium here. I'm going to torture this guy a little bit so that I can take control of this situation and convince the Jews that now that I've tortured him, let's let him go. The, soldier, the soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail the king of the Jews. They're mocking him. They're spitting on him. They're doing all kinds of things. And they struck him in the face. Once more, Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify. Crucify. Kill him. Kill him. Get rid of him. But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. You see the battle that's happening here, okay? The Jews insisted, we have a law, and according to the law, we must, he must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. Right there. We no longer can argue scripturally whether Jesus claimed to be God. He did. That's why he's being killed. Okay? When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid. Uh-oh. This man, this most powerful man in this area is now afraid He's losing control. And he went back inside the palace. Where did you come from, he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said. Now this would have blown Pilate's mind that Jesus refused to speak. He refused to defend himself. He refused to intervene in the situation and try and get it to stop. 
Don't you realize I have the power either to free you or to crucify you? Now, I want you to listen to this. This is, this is the part that I want you to listen to. So many people have read the book of Acts and know this story and have not read this. Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Do you want to know why we struggle with the mysteries of God? We want to be in control. The scriptures just told us that control is only given to us by God and that we do not possess it. We profess God to be uh, to be sovereign, in charge of what's going on, but yet we don't possibly live that way. We want all the answers. We can't accept mystery. We need to, in our finite minds, figure it out with our science and with all these different things. But yet, the scriptures say, you're not the one that can figure those things out. They will be revealed to you, one, through my son Jesus Christ, and two, through him coming back again. It would actually be scary if we were in control. Because the reality is, and I talked about this on Sunday, that when Jesus is pursuing you, whether he's pursuing you for salvation or whether he's pursuing you to draw closer to you, to draw you in as a Christian so that you will be more obedient to him, so that you will listen to him, so you will actually be a Christian, then then. We fight against that. The, the scriptures call it a goads. It, it calls it that we're fighting against the horse trainer. And I said to Paul, when Paul got saved, listen, stop fighting against my will. There's no point. But we put our backs up. We get our backs up against the wall. We want answers. We look to things. We want the mystery of God revealed to us right here, right now. Let me tell you something. Paul says... The mystery has been revealed through Jesus Christ and we know as much as we can handle. Jesus showed us the way to salvation. Jesus showed us the way that we are supposed to treat people. Jesus showed us how the church is supposed to come together and function as the body of Christ, as a family of believers that unify together, that's Ephesians 5, or Ephesians 4, sorry, that unify together, that love one another, that care for one another, that don't treat people like dirt, that live their lives in the Spirit. These are the mysteries that have been revealed because these things were never revealed to the Jews. To the Jews, God was a God that would put wrath on them if they didn't obey the law. To Christians, it's been revealed how we function and live in the Spirit. The mystery that we need solved has been given to us. And that's why we credit Jesus Christ and the flogging and the sacrifice and the nails that went through his wrists and him being hung on a tree. All the things that we remove ourselves from as we're asking for answers of honestly, today. I had the craziest day today. Like, I mean, it was just off the hook, crazy day. The phone calls I got, some blew my mind and got me thinking like, you wouldn't believe because there, there are issues and things that are just deep and, and I just, I, I, just I, I hate it when I see people going through things. And then, I, and then I get other phone calls and I'm like, oh my gosh, you are a freaking whiner. You've got to be kidding me because the person I just got off the phone with is really going through something and you are not going through anything. You're a whiner. And you want answers and you want my time and you want this and you want that. Because you want control. Let me tell you something. Control is a myth. Not one of us in this room is in control unless God gives us 
that control. It gives you control over some things in your life, right? Like I control my outfit, or my wife does. <laughs> because as I explained to Ben, it goes from mom buying you clothes to your wife buying you clothes. It's okay. Guys, it's just the way it is. It gives us control over smaller decisions that we make in our life. 